Hey everybody, this is Steve, and this past Saturday, I was one of the thousands of Orthodox Christians who gathered at Ground Zero in downtown New York City to witness history. His Eminence Archbishop Demetrius blessed the ground where, very soon, a new St. Nicholas Church building will stand. I'm working on a new episode of Be the Bee for Thursday, which will talk about why this was such an important day and what it can teach us. But before we talk about why it was important, let's talk about what happened. If you haven't yet, you can watch the service here. And if you want some more information on St. Nicholas, don't worry, there's a Be the Bee for that. The service began with a procession by families of some of the people who lost their lives in the September 11th attacks. They brought water up to the altar, water which the Archbishop would later bless and turn into holy water. The water came from the 9-11 Memorial Reflecting Pools, which are right next to the site of the church building. It was a very powerful moment that really reminded me of the Divine Liturgy. Every liturgy we offer God the entire world, represented by the bread and wine. And He, in return, blesses the world and gives us back His body and blood. In the same way, with this water from the memorial, the families offered up to God all of their pain, all of their loss. And in return, God gave back holy water, which He used to bless us and the site of the church. Then there were three readings. The first was from the Old Testament, the book of Joshua. We know about the time Moses led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt by parting the Red Sea. A similar thing happened many years later, after Moses died, when Joshua was leading the people. This time the Jordan River parted for them, and as the children of Israel were walking over the dry riverbed, they picked up twelve stones, which they took with them, as a sign of their deliverance. The next reading was from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. That's where St. Paul wrote that really famous line, If God is with us, who can be against us? Because no disaster can separate us from God's love. The final reading was from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. That's where Christ told us that if we not only hear His words, but do them as well, we build our house on a foundation of rock, a foundation strong enough and powerful enough to resist any disaster that comes its way. These three readings came together when people came out of the congregation to offer two towers of stone as a sign of God's promise, as a sign of the resurrection. Just like in the book of Joshua, God has allowed us to cross the Jordan River. He has brought us through the waters of baptism into the promised land the church. Just like in the epistle to the Romans, nothing, no matter how terrible, can separate us from God's love. God has turned the terror of the cross into a key that has opened for us the door to the resurrection. And just like in the gospel according to St. Matthew, we try not to simply hear the word of God, but to also act upon it in our lives. We try to unite ourselves to the word of God, who is Christ himself, as we become members of his body, the church. Then the archbishop blessed the rocks with holy water. It was water of pain that had been turned into water of blessing, sanctifying these rocks that will soon become a place of peace, reflection, and prayer. I really hope you're able to watch the entire service. As you do, listen to the words of the prayers and the readings, reflect on their meaning, and join yourself to the prayer that we offered as a church and continue to offer every day. I hope this helped you to better understand what happened during the ground blessing. For more on why it was such an amazing experience, Join me Thursday for the next episode of Be the Bee.